What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of career mode. This is episode number 43 and we start today's episode off with some more player training for our youngsters. Uh, Walsh of course probably one of our best prospects at the academy in the series so far. Fagan who is a six foot six northern Irishman and also Jonathan Clark a young English goalkeeper. I didn't realize his potential has dropped quite a bit in the academy so might possibly release him from our academy sooner rather than later. I, I really should talk about the youth players a bit more when I'm when I'm training them and just showing you through the academy just so you can sort of understand exactly who they are and uh, what they could possibly offer to the team uh, in years to come. But uh, still for the first game of today's episode, coming on the back of those fantastic back-to-back -back victories against Manchester United and Chelsea, we will now take on West Ham in midweek away at London in the EFL Cup third round. And as you would have seen by my lineup, speaking to youth players, there were quite a few of them in the team because we didn't really care what happened either way in this game. And we started off on the back foot, as you'd expect, against a stronger West Ham United side. They were already a goal up after a terrible pass with me by Jack O'Connell. The amount of times this season, and really throughout the course of the series, I've been giving the ball away from trying to play out from the back is crazy. Uh, the second chance fell with Hart making a good save. And whilst we have played a little bit better than our opponents in the first half, Roberto for West West Ham, who as we know has struggled quite a bit since coming in in real life West Ham. He was on fire uh, for the host in this game and six minutes after the restart, feeling quite hard done by to be trading by a goal, West Ham doubled their lead, made it 2-0 and it seemed as though the game was going to be theirs and their progress was going to be secured until with 12 minutes to go, we get back in the game, uh, Pele scoring his first goal for the club. This is really nice to see, lovely little link up player to McBurney. Some of you guys have been asking me to play Pele more this season so he's going to get some game time, first goal of the season and his first goal for Clyde makes it 2-1 gets us back in the game but just a few minutes later the Hammers restore their two goal cushion make it 3-1 and would progress to the next round of the EFL Cup so out of the EFL Cup and again not really fussed either way and some of you guys might be wondering why I did decide to rotate my entire starting 11 after back to back amazing wins after back to back clean sheets and the reason being is quite simple I understand if you win the EFL Cup you can qualify for the Europa League next season in fact you will qualify for the Europa League next season. It's a path into Europe, but as I always say, every single season, the board don't list it as an objective, which means that we could win the Carabao Cup this year, qualify for the Europa League next year, but let's say we finish in 10th, 11th place in the Premier League table, it wouldn't matter to the board. The game wouldn't register that as achievement for qualifying for the Europa League. And with incredibly tough league games this season for us, I felt as though it was best just to sort of avoid the extra game in the calendar. If we got through, then great, but regardless of what round we'd be in, we'd still feel the weak inside as the Premier Premier League objective is our most important objective here with Sheffield United but uh, still second game today's episode on the back of that defeat now back home at Bramwell Lane back in the Premier League welcome Richard Pochettino Spurs here uh, at home and the first chance falling to us 21 minutes in putting our first 11 back out there fully fit fresh and raring to go after being rested in midweek and that paid off just 21 minutes in Ollie Shaw storming down the left hand side crossing to Ivan Tony, and last season it was Shaw and McBurn that had the great bromance but this year it's going to be Shaw and Tony these two are going to be like brothers this season and that's how they've started off they've already combined for a couple of goals this season Shaw assisting Tony there's another one there what a cross by Ollie Shaw inch perfect delivery to the back stick and Ivan Tony after the hat trick at Stamford Bridge gets his fourth goal in two and his seventh goal in the Premier League already seven goals already for the shocker Sheffield United one Spurs nil and a dream start here at Bramwell and from kickoff, Spurs try to play out from the back. They give the ball away with uh, Deli Alley intercepted by Ivan Tony. Plays back towards Norwood, then Fleck into the shocker. Takes his time with some skill moves into John Fleck. Fleck back to Tony with a lovely back heel. Great save by Lloris on Tony, but who's there to follow it up? It's Dominic Calvert Lewin, our new £15 million pound man who has had a fantastic start since returning to Brownwell Lane. Scored the winning goal against Manchester United. Scores the goal there to double our lead and make it 2 0. And just for the break, once again, a first half where we're defending so well, like you saw in the first two games. Spurs barely had any proper chance due to how good our back five was looking. But when they did get a chance, who was there to make the save? looking for his third straight clean sheet in the Premier League Dean Henderson great stop there with his feet by the youngster and it's still 2-0 to Sheffield United but he did have a shaky moment though in the 49th minute there palming that cross up in the air and Nathan Wood who stepped in and the 19 year old has looked so good since coming into our first 11 with a big block there on the goal line keeps it at 2-0 as we still have a cushion in this game and in the 67th minute once again we spread the play from right to left Shaw sprints down left hand side beats Mikel Marino cross to the far post how Calvert Lewin missed that I don't know but 
we were bailed out by the referee's whistle as he awards a penalty. You might have missed it initially, but Marino slid in on shore and after the cross took him down. Definite penalty. Tony stands up to take it, but Lloris pushes it behind for a corner as Ivan fails to get his second goal of the game. So it's still 2-0. I'm still rubbish at penalties, as you can tell, and uh, still the lead remains at two goals to nil. But not for too much longer. Just a few minutes later, Tony would get his second goal of the game, and what a goal it was as well. He said, I didn't want to score from a dead ball situation. I wanted to show my full array of talent. John Fleck rolls the shocker through. He drags it back first time to send his man into the dust and levers it into the top corner with the left boot and celebrate with our fans. Sheffield United 2, uh, sorry, Sheffield United 3, Spurs 0. I just, I love that touch there to beat his man and the finish on the weaker left foot into the top corner. This guy is just unreal and if any of you guys are struggling in career mode to score a goal and need an option for a budget team, I mean, I can only recommend you one name, Ivan Tony. The way this guy has been playing in this series is truly remarkable. 3 0 to Sheffield United. It is three amazing wins against three fantastic Premier League sides. And don't forget as well, three straight clean sheets for Dean Henderson as well. Joe Hart has stepped in to this team and he's really been helping Dean on the training pitch. You know, every time Dean's been working on his kicking, I've told Joe to go get lunch. But either way, Joe has really had a great impact on Dean Henderson since coming in. Great dressing room leader. But as for our back five, I've got to shout out these two boys here. Nathan Wood and Jordan Taranariga, who you see celebrating a couple of our goals here. They've stepped in for McKenna and O'Connell due to form and they have been absolutely fantastic, man. I mean, Nathan Wood, don't forget, it's just 19 years old. This is Jordan Taranariga's first stint in Premier League football. They have both been absolutely brilliant in our back five since coming in. They've been blocking shots, intercepting through balls forward, making crucial tackles, making crucial blocks on the goal line, winning big headers, clearing the ball away under pressure. They've, they've just been brilliant. I mean, all five of our back five so far have, have been fantastic in this little mini streak here. And if you were to tell me at the start of the season that three of our first four Premier League wins are going to come against Chelsea, Manchester, United and Spurs and in all three of those games we keep clean sheets as well I never would have believed you but uh, in the post-match press conference I got asked in the interview about this unbeaten streak and I had to praise the defense I said there's a reason why we've been unbeaten in seven games the defense have been absolutely brilliant only six goals conceded in seven games but on the other side of the pitch as well as you take a look at the table here we've also scored 14 goals in our first seven games as well so right now we're averaging two goals per game so as things stand we're on course to have our best goal scoring uh, season ever in the Premier League and of course right now in the league table the most important thing is where we are we're in fifth place and unbeaten after our first seven games exactly where we need to be if the board are going to be smiling come the end of 38 games so long may it continue but we have got a tough month of October as we will be taking on Manchester City during this month away at the Etihad Stadium and I am not looking forward to that right now my city haven't won the league in this career mode so far but right now top of the table seven wins in seven games and 21 goals scored as well I'm not looking forward forward to that trip to Manchester that could be a very tough one I was praising that defense a moment ago they're going to be super tested in that game but uh, regardless we do enter the month of October you saw the fixtures there and also look at our academy as well uh, some of you guys noticed this in the last episode I didn't notice it Thanks so pointed out uh, Serge Koulibaly is now 16 years old and ready to be given a pro deal in this team which is really bloody annoying because it means that I wasted money on Jamal Lewis because I didn't know when Koulibaly was going to turn 16. I thought for the rest of the season he might be 15 years old and therefore we've only got Ollie Shaw as our only left back in this team. If he gets injured like he did last year then who's going to play left back? I mean John Fleck could possibly position change there but we could maybe slide to run a Riga to left wing back but it's not really what I want to do. So I signed Jamal Lewis just for the uh, security really to be safe rather than sorry. Turns out I didn't need him in the end but anyway I'm still glad Lewis is here because I love his stats but anyway Koulibaly he is now 16 years old. However, due to Lewis coming in, I won't promote him until such a time as required. And uh, for our third and final game of today's episode, we will now take on Crystal Palace away at Selhurst Park here in London, looking for our fourth straight win and our fourth straight clean sheet. And thus, because of that, no change to our lineup once again. In this little mini run, we've kept the same first 11 because why would we alter it when we're playing so well, both on the defensive end and on the offensive end? So, taking on Roy Hodgson's side, first chance would fall to Palace as well with 
for Zaha coming forward here, but what a tackle by Nathan Woods. He deflects the ball onto Zaha as well as it trickles behind for a goal kick. Hodgson on the sidelines complaining, but I'm saying, mate, Nathan got the ball there and made a brilliant last six challenge, but again, it shows you how good he's been since coming in. The 19-year-old has been superb, and from that goal kick, we pass that from the back as well. Sure to John Fleck. Great chance for us to take the lead with a good stop by the goalkeeper, Zaha, tracking back, heads the ball away, and it's still goalless at the break. So, very nervy and tense first half. Very little being created in the game as we are still deadlocked at 0-0. And in the second half, we win the ball back here through that man once again, Nathan Wood. We play out from the back and as Flex spots Shaw making one of his trademark forward aggressive runs down left-hand side. He's in behind the back line and while Shaw still hasn't scored a goal in the Premier League since being promoted out of the academy, his assist numbers continue to climb. Spots Dominic Calvert-Lewin at the far post, plays it across the edge of the uh, six-yard area and Dominic could not miss from four yards out. His second goal in two games for our number 10 and our £15 million man continues what has been a fantastic start to his first season back at Bramwell Lane. £15 million. That could prove to be one of the steals of the series at this rate. 1-0 Sheffield United and in a very tense game where we thought this game could only be settled by a goal at this point. It was great to see us get the first goal of the game and break the deadlock and draw first blood. And with 60 minutes to go, we double our lead as well. Ivan Tony was given so much space by the Crystal Palace defenders there. I think Roy Hodgson said don't stick tight to Tony after what happened in the game against Spurs where he turned his man for his second goal of the game so well after he got too close to him. They gave him space for that but with Tony he's that sort of striker. Doesn't matter how you choose to play him he'll find a way to counter it. Stay off him, ease off him a little bit with the pressure or stick tight to him. He'll find a way to put the ball in the back of the net. He does there. It's 2-0 Sheffield United. Fifth goal in three games and he should have had his brace in this game and he should have given Ollie Shaw his bro a hat-trick of assists. Great storming run by Shaw again down the left hand side wonderful cross again at the far post and Tony gets the clean connection with the header totally wrong heads it against the Palace defender as it goes behind for a corner so no hat trick of assist for Ollie Shaw for the first time in his career but he won't mind one bit because he still ends up with a champagne after a brilliant man of the match display as he helps ensure we get our fourth straight clean sheet and our fourth straight Premier League win and if you remember at the start of the season I said for Ollie Shaw this year I had a very big objective for our 18 year old and that was for him to get 10 assists come the end of the season. He's already got seven. He's got seven assists in eight Premier League games. The 18-year-old is just unbelievable. I don't think I've ever had a fullback like him on career mode, man. On the defensive end, he's solid and secure. When going forward, he seems just to know where his teammates are. To pick a brilliant pass or a brilliant cross out. He's already got seven of the ten assists I required of him this year. Already in eight games. That's for Ivan Tony. What did I say? I said I want him to get 20 goals this year. He's already got nine. Nine goals in eight games for Ivan Tony. These two are like brothers in arms, man. Having a fantastic fantastic start to the season. As things stand, Ivan Tony is leading the way in the golden boot race and on course to uh, on course to finish with 30 plus goals in the Premier League season. And Oli Shaw is top of the assist charts with 7 and 8 and also on course to have 30 plus assists this year. Unbelievable start for Sheffield United. We're into a Champions League place as things stand. Still unbeaten after our first eight games and Oli Shaw and Ivan Tony are just on fire. You love to see it. But that Wednesday's episode of Korea Mode guys who so a big thank you for watching hope you have enjoyed it and if you did enjoy today's episode then please do drop a like much love to you all and I'll see you for the next episode very soon